Well, good morning, Dartfish Rally friends. It's a beautiful Sunday morning here in Sardinia. The sun is up, a little bit of breeze to keep the stages clear. And most importantly, look at this, we have rally cars. We have rally cars, but only, sadly, for 39 kilometres today. Hmm, that's a debate that will rage on, isn't it? 12 points, 39 kilometres. Ooh. I'm not sure, but listen, let's enjoy it. Let's enjoy that battle. It's like a sprint format, isn't it? You know, rally sprint with rallying, with rally cross. Let's combine it all. Let's go the whole hog and go all the way around. Uh, Terry, oh, sorry, Terry, Terry. Let's go around here. I want to chat with Aaron Johnson. We'll talk to these boys in a minute. Let's talk to Aaron. Aaron, <clears throat> I was thinking about you. Thinking about you driving in this morning. And I was thinking, if you... As long as you weren't thinking about me last night. <laughs> not last night, darling. No, no, this morning as we were driving in. I was thinking, if you were born and if you'd been brought up in America, you wouldn't be called Aaron, would you? No, Aaron. No, but you wouldn't be called that either. Right, entertain me. They would call you AJ. Uh, yeah, well, back in the day at school, I would have been sort of called AJ as well by some people. I, I am the master of nicknames and calling people different names. Am I allowed to call you AJ from now on? Yeah, you can. I've definitely been called worse, so... <laughs> I, think, uh, I think there's definitely worse things you could call me by. Yeah, fantastic. I'm calling you AJ from now on. Aaron, AJ, uh, this morning, this morning's two stages, not quite the same as last year, but we go back to, what, 22 and they were the same stages? Yeah, the stages are identical like they were in 22 when we were back on the Elgaro side. Last year we were in Albia and these two stages are quite soft, but I think uh, they're also quite enjoyable. Good, good. It's a strange morning, though, isn't it? 39 kilometres. You had such a long day yesterday, such an intensive day yesterday, such a demanding day. And then you come out for 39 kilometres on the final day. Is that, do you have to change your approach, change maybe your head in terms of your, your mental approach to it because of that? Yeah, yesterday was a little bit about uh, car preservation as well, whereas today is just as hard as she'll go for as long as she'll go and we'll see what happens. How disappointing was that yesterday? Because, you, you know, I'm a big one for remote services. I really do yeah. think we've got to bring it back. It's nonsense that, you know, that you were out the rally when... It, had we had a remote service, that problem would have been identified. No one would have known about it. Um, you, at what point did you realise you had the issue? In, in the tyre zone? We already knew halfway through Tula, the second time, that we had an issue, but we weren't sure of the severity of it. But yeah, when we got to the tyre fitting zone, it was quite clear that uh, it was bigger than we had uh, anticipated. And it ended our day. But yeah, they have to bring back remote services, especially when they send us out for a full day for 16 hours and we get 15 minutes for lunch and no time to, to prepare for the afternoon. So they have to do something like this. And again, we come out this morning for 39 Ks. Uh, and there is a lot of points on the line also. So uh, yeah, the itinerary still needs to be looked at. AJ, good luck. Right, good luck Takasan out there today. Uh, now, let's wander around this way, keep it this way, Elliot. Let's go and have a little look. Uh, a little bit tight, this little road this morning. Morning, Big Gordy. Shoes, shoes, we've got to do a shoe check with Gordy this morning. Big Gordy has two of the same shoes on. Good job, Gordy. It's not so early, is it? Remarkable, isn't not so early this morning, so he's got the right shoes on. Um, anyone who saw our Sunday in Portugal will remember that Gordy came out with one shoe from one set and the other shoe from the other. Uh, very odd, indeed. Um, we'll have a quick word with Thierry. Thierry, we were so disappointed for you yesterday because you were driving so brilliantly. Um, just tell us about that moment because you seemed to realise very early that you'd got it wrong. Yeah, um, I just made out of concentration and basically I break when I realised that it was a tight corner. I, I, I don't know, I was just... Focusing on the previous corner where from the morning I I remember I could go a bit faster but I just forgot what was behind basically. You just missed out of yeah. instant of concentration, so stupid. Do you know what? I don't ever think I remember you talking about missing your concentration before. I mean it has to happen sometimes, but you are very capable of focusing and concentrating. That's really unusual for you. Yeah, but uh, it happened. Um, it happened here and there, but obviously there was no room for any margin. We just went slightly wide and stuck, uh, stuck basically on the on on the loose, and uh, the car was beached, so nothing we could do. But yeah, I mean, for sure it doesn't happen so often, but it can happen. And obviously, when you when you sleep for four and a half hours a night, and 
wake up uh, 425 to drive uh, the 120k road section and yeah i don't know um just yeah missing the focus it all contributes uh, very very quickly because i know you're going what can you do to take those points today first on the road loose surface what can you do just go flat out and uh, and, and see this could be entertaining. Stand back if you're in the stage. It's Terry Neuville's coming through. Check the tyres. They're all on soft tyres. Apart from Danny Sordo, who's got one hard. Not quite sure whether that's maybe a tactical gamble. It's maybe a little bit of Hyundai covering all their bases. It might just be that he, he just doesn't have the allocation of softs left. I don't know. But Danny's gone with one hard compound tyre today. Uh, yeah, there we are. Let's just have a look. The bonnet pins, remember, on like Tanax car, this front left bonnet pin. I know I'm looking to the right, but that's the front left bonnet pin. Uh, popped up, didn't work. You had to tape that down. All is good. So let's go down and have a word with Adrian Formo. Uh, good luck to Thierry Neuville and to Martin, to my new Bessie mate, AJ. AJ, what did they call you at school, Elliot? Hell or smell? And they used to call me Sparky. All Clarkies in Scotland, Clarky Sparky. So, and, and same with my older brother and my younger brother. We were a family of Sparkies. My best mate was called Doobie. I've got no idea why. And there was Doobie, ba the big Doobie and little Doobie. <laughs> right. Oh, look, it's uh, Gregoire Munster. I thought it was Adrian. It's Gregoire. Has the stage started? No. Oh, he's just walking. It's the recce video he's looking through there. Speed it up. Look at that. So that's his recce video. It's an onboard from a previous year. Of course it is, Elliot. It's a Hyundai as well. It's a Hyundai as well. Uh, I got that completely wrong. It's too early for me. I can't see these things. Ah, yeah, and I wonder who that is then. That's maybe Nouvelle you'd have thought, isn't it? Just watching from previous years. What did Aaron say to us? 2022. So it'll be 2022 they're looking at. You know, these two stages, it's... OK, the, the, the final stage, the Argentiera stage, the power stage, uh, only the last six or seven years we've been using that as a power stage. But we've been in this area on the final day for a number of years. Hayden Padden, remember, a few years ago, got it disastrously wrong, ended up on top of a wall, through a wall, partly on top of it. Uh, there have been issues. They're, they're, they're relatively, as we know, very short stages, uh, relatively well known. Nothing too dramatic in those stages, but as with any stage on a rally, you can be caught out. Louis, a very good morning to you. How are you this morning? Uh, very good. Can't wait for starting this uh, this uh, last day of uh, Rally Sardinia. Do you know what I find incredible? We were in town this morning. It was busy. We came out of town. It was busy with rally fans. We're here. It's just me making lots of noise. The birds singing. The bells of the sheep in the background. You're on million euro rally cars. It's odd, isn't it? Uh, it's uh, kind of uh, quiet before the storm. <laughs> it is exactly that. You have got it exactly spot on. Uh, let's leave Gregoire to it. He is concentrating just... Double checking. Do you know what? There are some drivers that can almost, with certain stages, they can almost repeat the corners from memory to you. And I tell you, he's very good at that. Gus Greensmith. Gus Greensmith's almost got a photographic memory. Uh, but some of them just need that. Uh, no, no, not at all, my friend. Not at all, my friend. No, Gus is just a little bit exceptional in many ways. Uh, folks, we'll wait for some other cars to turn up. We are just a kilometre or two away from the start. That is Thierry Neuville. He is first on the road this morning, making his way into what is an enormously important day. Remember, zero points bag from Saturday for Neuville. It's a huge day ahead for him, but it's going to be a tricky one. First on the road, what can he do? Well, we've moved down the road a little bit. Look at this, the open countryside of northern Sardinia. We're not far from Porto Torres, which is the stopping off point, if you fancy heading across the straits to Corsica. So, yeah, we're not far from Corsica at all. Uh, Claudia, I'd love to go back to Corsica. What, what's, would you like to go back to Corsica? What were your memories and thoughts on Corsica? Yeah, definitely, 100%. There's something just very, just rallying about it, isn't there? That's a strange thing to say, but they're steeped in rallying history there. Yeah, no, and the roads and, yeah, like you say, the history, it's, it's made for rallying. Like these, these, these mirrored back things, you can just make sure that you're everything's straight before you get in the car and before a camera goes on you. Yeah, that's why we have them. I thought so. No other reason. No other reason at all. No other reason. And do you know what? You, the real reason they brought them clearly uh, they don't have the reflective roofs. It's to keep the temperatures down a little bit in the cockpits. It's not been too warm. It's really pleasant this weekend, really pleasant. But, you know, as, uh, well, both Aaron Johnson and 
Terry said it was a long, long day yesterday, a really long day yesterday. Points on offer today. Elvin, how would you go about it? It was a great end to the day yesterday. Does that give you a bit of renewed confidence ahead of today? Let's see, I'm not sure. But uh, obviously we're going to give it a go and see what happens. Do you like these stages? You know them really well. We've driven them a few times in the past. Do you like these ones? Ah, it's quite extreme. Uh, you don't find, uh, obviously, uh, so much like this anywhere else. They're quite narrow, uh, quite fast. But uh, let's see. Best of luck. Best of luck. Yeah. Do you know Elvin's battling? He's really battling, scoring good points on every rally. Yet to find his best form. But when he does, and that could well be on the coming fast gravel rallies, uh, he will propel himself right back to the top of that fight for the championship this year. Oit Tanak. Oh, really good yesterday, wasn't he, Oit? Really disappointing that he had that conversation with the team and that instruction from the team. That's uh, yeah, the points for second place were more important than pushing for the win. Really disappointing for all of us. We were enjoying the battle with this man here, with Vinny and with the champ. It was a great battle. It was the same battle that we were enjoying in Portugal. Resumed the battle here in Sardinia and it was fabulous. But you know, the champ was driving as the champ does brilliantly. Brilliantly. Difficult day for the champ because he's not really not really interested so much in the extra points available today. He's just interested in the win. And um he might not be the highest point scorer at the end of the event. That, that's odd, and it does have to change for next year. It really does have to change. Uh, Martin doing a job there, checking the tyre pressures. Martin, are you well this morning? I just uh, made a Chuck Norris joke. Chuck uh, Norris joke? Yeah. If, uh, Chuck Norris, uh, is Chuck, if Chuck Norris uh, will be a rally driver, he comes only for uh, Sundays. <laughs> he comes only. <laughs> I don't quite understand that, but it's quite funny. <laughs> he just comes for the final, the final kind of push, the final glory moments. Yeah, it's a it's a strange thing. This 39 Ks. Um, let's wander around. Let's wander around. Give the boys a bit of room. It's very narrow here. Not an awful lot of space for the boys to do their work. Not a lot of space at all. Very quick word with the champ this morning. Uh, champ, what what is the objective this morning? Just to secure the win. Well, that's the main objective, that's for sure. Um, but, you know, 17 seconds is not a huge gap where you can completely relax. And uh, especially with this poor stage, which is very tricky always and rough. So it's better to try to keep some margin for any anything. So, no, you have to, I think you have to keep trying a good reason. Yeah, that power stage has had mixed results for you in the past. You were beaten by Thierry that incredible year. I seem to remember one year, though, you had a blinding drive through that stage. Is that right where you beat everyone by four or five seconds? I won it once at the power stage by doing reverse on the airpin. <laughs> so that, that time it was working quite well, but uh, the recent years it was often more close and we have to say the Hyundai have been always strong in there. But it wasn't. It wasn't just that he won it. He won it by about, I think it was five seconds in an eight or nine kilometer stage. It was astonishing. It was astonishing. That was in the Volkswagen days. But remember back to that incredible battle where there were four and a bit seconds between Neuville and Ogier going into the final day, and Neuville reeled him in. He reeled him in and then beat him in the final power stage. It was quite incredible and great to watch. Now. Johan Rossell, what a day he had yesterday. Tremendous day for you yesterday, Johan. Uh, what can you do today, though? I suppose today is just about consolidating that second place. Ah, I think uh, now we need, we, we need to finish the job. Uh, for sure, it's not easy stages, uh, very narrow. Uh, keep the, the ace open. And uh, yeah, but the failure into the car I, was good yesterday, and I think it's the same today. Maybe your best day in a rally car yesterday? Oh, I think it's uh, maybe yes. Maybe yes. It's a very good uh, good day for me for for the team. Yeah, but uh, now the uh, yesterday you have a, you have no point yeah. <laughs> today. Yes. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Have you a great yesterday? Well done. I uh, just spotting down there. Have a look. That's that's Sebastian Ogier and Oit Tanak. This is the magnificent thing about rallying. In Portugal, battling tooth and nail. Here for the first day and a half, battling tooth and nail. But you won't get it in any other motorsport. The two of them just watching, I suspect, Thierry Neuville coming through the early part of this power stage. I, I, you tell me, you tell me where else we see this. You tell me what other sports you would see the two biggest rivals watching together. I, I, I don't think there's another motorsport like it. I really don't. 
It is great to see. You can talk about rivalries all you like, but there is enormous mutual respect, enormous mutual respect amongst drivers and co-drivers out here. And, you know, there's genuine friendship, genuine friendship and camaraderie. Um, I think that looks great. That's a great shot. That's a great shot. It really is. Let's leave them to it. Let's leave them to it. They're watching, I suspect, as I say, Thierry Neuville on the All Live. You know, a lot of people debate, is that fair? Should they be allowed to have telephones in the car? What they have banned... Have they banned the FIA? I'm not sure it's come into rallying yet. It's certainly in cross-country rallying. They've banned watches in cross-country <laughs> rallying because you can take information into the stages um, and you can communicate through watches these days. I thought they'd banned it in rallying or the plan was to ban watches as well, those smart watches. A bit like the one that our friend Elliot, the cameraman's just bought himself and he's dead proud of. Show them your watch, Elliot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Show them your watch. There it is. Dead proud of it. Dead proud of it. He really is. It's got everything on it on it the stage time's on it you're dead clever you really are uh yeah but you know there is a lot of debates a lot of debate about do these guys get an advantage because they can see what's going on well that's all part of the game jan solens what what a weekend he's had i don't remember back just well it was uh, 36 hours or so now friday evening stage four the final corner he smacked that rear left of the car and destroyed, well, almost destroyed, the rear suspension. Worked really hard where we were at the stop line. Uh, put it all back together again. Looked like it hadn't done the job, but it did. It held out. Uh, yeah, and that, that real hard work you put in at the end of four is paying rewards. You're, 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 you're still in the event and up for scoring good points. Yeah, that's for sure. You never need to give up. We just need to keep pushing, stay focused, and also... It's a rally that staying on the road, it's very, very difficult. So at the end, it looks like we're here and there are still four stages to go. You know, I need, I really do need to learn a bit more about the suspension parts. Which part was it that broke? What was the, what was the actual component that broke? It was an arm, but the problem was that it wasn't the arm that was broken because we here we have another arm and we can change it. It was the bolts that are fixing the arm that went absolutely off. The bolts were... Uh, snapped. Yeah, yeah, were snapped. So it was impossible to repair, and uh, well, we need to go like that. How many cable ties did you use? Uh, <laughs> difficult to say. We did 60 kilometers like this, and it was crazy. Yeah, if you want to have a look at what we were talking about there, that incident at the end of stage four, go back through our Facebook feed. There's a little video there that shows the boys working on the car and the repair that they did. So there we are. Folks, 39 kilometres ahead of us. The stage is well underway. Uh, you know, OK, just 39 k's, but lots still to play for out there. As Sebastian Ogier said, you know, 17 seconds can disappear like that in the stages. It's going to be fascinating to see who needs these bonus points more than anyone. I suspect it will be Thierry Neuville. So stick with us, folks. Tanak's firing up and heading off. We're firing up and heading off. We'll see you at the end of the rally. Thank you.